own. She said she would never be co-opted into the Democratic Alliance. Well, uh, unfortunately, that was the choice that she made in the end. Uh, and it's a pity, but it's still a good thing because what it means is we have more options for coalition government. I spoke earlier about how we're aiming to win Gauteng in the Northern Cape. We believe that we can win Gauteng in a coalition. And if Akhang is now added to the mix, that adds another political dimension that people might be able to vote for. Which, which is will the name of the party, let's build, to get that she into, set up. Or into a coalition. But you need, if you, you were unsuccessful in getting her, mm. I mean, I imagine that you've approached Archbishop Desmond Tutu. I can't talk about who we have approached and who we haven't approached. But you, I mean, you would, because the endorsement of somebody like him would be a significant thing. For any political organization. But so again, you would be crazy not to have approached I will him. not talk about who we have and haven't approached. I will talk about who has come to work with us. Patricia DeLille, who is the leader of the Independent Democrats, a former member of the PAC, trade unionist, hugely admired woman in South African politics, merged her political party with ours uh, two years ago and is now the mayor of Cape Town. Um, Helen's great project for the Democratic Alliance since she became leader of the party has been to close down the barriers between opposition parties that share the same values uh, but that may differ on individual policy matters so that we can make a credible uh, offer to voters as an alternative to the ANC. In the event that not all political parties who share our values agree to that kind of merger, we can still work together in coalition. What we need to do is build those it relationships. such a long way from that because just given the... The, the conversations that have publicly been had about mm. this. I mean, you are, uh, the, co the, the, the opposition is very seriously divided and it's hard to see you working together. The opposition is not divided. I have been working with the opposition in Parliament uh, for well over a year now. We have formed a multi-party opposition forum. Together we, uh, we led a bid to unseat President Zuma from office, a motion of no confidence, because of the crises that we faced in government last year. Together we opposed the Protection of State Information Bill. Uh, together we fought for more accountability and more effectiveness in Parliament. So it is absolutely not the case that we are divided. We are working together, we have different value sets, we have different programs of action, but where we find common cause, we come together, we work together, and it's a very good standing from which we're working okay. that will enable us to get into coalition. Together. Well, let's talk about something that the government uh, says it wants to do, which is change the way it's going about land reform. Mm. And, I, and I'm going to quote 1941, former ANC president Dr. A.B. Xuma said, the fundamental basis of all wealth and power is the ownership of land. Without land rights, any race will be doomed to poverty, destitution, ill health, mm. and lack of all of life's essentials, which is perhaps the, the reason that the government said, look, what we want to do is transfer 30% of the land that's owned by whites mm -hmm. to blacks. And we're talking about uh, at apartheid, 87% of the land in South Africa being owned by whites. Mm -hmm. That ambition you agree with, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. We fully support land reform. Okay. Land reform has two parts. It's land restitution, the return of land from which black South Africans were dispossessed under forced removals and under the 1913 Land Act. And then land reform for its own sake, because we need a diversified economy. Because the reason land ownership is racially skewed is because there were economic uh, pieces of legislation drafted by the apartheid government which deliberately kept black people okay. off the So economy. it is absolutely essential to get land to blacks in order to improve their prospects. Absolutely. Now the government has said look it's impossible it cannot meet its target of this 30 percent by next year and they're talking about radically changing it, speeding it up. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? We think that had we been in government, we would have easily reached that target in the first place. Let's, let's not go over the history because it's more interesting to, and, so, more, and more realistic to talk to, about what, could, what you can do for that. The now. failure to reach that target is something the government needs to take responsibility for. Speeding it up, of course it must speed it up. It's, it's nowhere near reaching its targets and the methodologies that it's used so far have failed. What the government needs to do is do a radical rethink about how it engages in land reform. And here, Trevor Manuel's National Development Plan is a case in point. He has proposed uh, in the National Development Plan a system of share ownership where uh, black farm workers who have been living and working on farms for generations are given funding by the government to acquire a share of the farm on which they have worked for generations and contributed to the profits for for generations. So that they can be part of the business, they can be owners of the business and can share the risk and reward of participating in the rural economy. We fully support that approach and we've implemented it where we govern. The ANC has not 
engaged in a process of land reform that has taken in the innovative ways, like share schemes, into account. And that's the reason they haven't been able to reach this And target. you're saying if they did that, they could reach the 30% target? Absolutely. Target. Another issue that's so a problem... So the, so the talk of uh, effectively expropriation, of going to expropriation that is just and equitable... That's in the Constitution. Would you support expropriation that? is a constitutional method of land reform, and we support it. We are this a constitutional effectively party. Effectively, the seizure of land. But constitutional expropriation is willing buyer, willing seller. It's not a seizure of land that is done without the consent of the seller. So you're the saying it doesn't go far enough. The Constitution is very clear. The Constitution is very clear about the fact that if land is expropriated, it must be done at market uh, prices. And if the two parties cannot reach an agreement about the market prices, the courts can intervene to set the price and make, uh, make sure that the, the deal can go through. We are constitutionalists as a party, and we believe that land reform needs to take place. But we don't think that the ANC has to go down the route of land grabs, which is essentially what expropriation, forced expropriation, would imply in order to reach these targets. And do you think that's the what they're going to do? The failure to reach them is not because they didn't do forced expropriation. It's because they didn't implement the right policy. The ANC is, is saying that that's not what they're going to do. Mm. The ANC, one of the reasons there's so much uncertainty in the South African economy is I think because the ANC government quite fancifully toys with extreme examples of economic interventions. Julius Malema was famous for talking about nationalization. And that kind of policy uncertainty uh, leads investors to wonder whether or not they should bring money into the South African economy. I don't think there's value in the ANC government talking about expropriation without compensation. It's going to hamper investment. I believe there's enough such social justice room and enough of a social justice mandate in the constitution which compels the government to engage in expropriation for the purposes of land reform, but it dictates that that must be done according to the principle of willing buyer, willing seller. And I think that had the ANC done this effectively, they would have reached their targets ages ago. Lindiwe Mazibuka, thank you for coming on Hard Talk. Thank you very much.